Welcome back to Paul's Tech News. Another week has passed and the tech world has only used that time to gain momentum as we hurtle towards Q4 and launch Apocalypse 2022, the launching, a veritable PC hardware superstorm that has been gathering when the new CPUs and GPUs will rain down upon us like a glorious golden shower, allowing for a few fleeting moments of happiness before we spot the attached price tags and then retreat back into our depression caves. But before you allow the winter malaise to wash over you completely, which would be weird since technically fall hasn't even started yet, take heed that this week's news is not just another reminder that big launches are coming but are still weeks or months away. There was perhaps even bigger news as the Ethereum merge actually happened, kneecapping GPU mining profitability on a global scale. And then on Friday, the bombshell dropped that on the cusp of a new generation of GeForce graphics cards launching, Nvidia's biggest add-in board partner, EVGA, is exiting the GPU market and will no longer be doing business with Jensen and company. That one I didn't see coming. When it rains tech news, it pours though. Hope you brought your umbrella. Excellent. Today's video is brought to you by the new Height Eclipse HG10 wireless gaming headset, combining a clean matte lunar gray color scheme with competition grade functionality, including 2.4 gigahertz wireless connectivity with 30 hour estimated battery life, high fidelity 40 millimeter neodymium drivers, a detachable unidirectional mic, USB type C connectivity with an included 1.8 meter cable to play and charge at the same time, and conveniently accessible controls for power, volume, and mute. For more on the Height Eclipse HG10 headset, click the sponsor link in the video description. Let's start with a quick look at the big board. We only have a small update this week. I added the likely announcement date for Intel's 13th gen Raptor Lake CPUs, which will probably take place on September 27th during their innovation events. ARC A500 and A700 GPUs could get a launch date that day too, although ARC launch dates are notoriously difficult to pin down. With Nvidia set to host to their GeForce Beyond event at GTC on Tuesday, September 20th though, where we will almost certainly be seeing the reveal of the RTX 40 series of GPUs GPUs, a fine selection of RTX 4090 leaks have surfaced this week. It began on Monday when a since-deleted post on the Chinese Baidu forums showed off what appears to be the retail box and an assembly line of RTX 4090 GPUs from Zotac, with a redesigned three-fan cooler that looks quite large, likely taking up three if not four slots. It's hard to say for sure, but there seems to be room for one or possibly two 16-pin PCIe Gen 5 12VH power connectors for power delivery, which would allow the card to pull over 600 watts from a compatible power supply. Then on Tuesday, a gigabyte retail box for their RTX 4090 gaming OC was posted by Twitter user WNZOD. While the card itself wasn't shown, retail box images appear to show a similar design to Gigabyte's RTX 3090 Ti gaming OC, which would mean a big fat four slot cooler to contrast the slimmed down font they're using for 4090. This would appear to also confirm the GPU's memory configuration, 24 gigabytes of GDDR6 X. Twitter user WNZOD also showed a picture of a Lenovo Legion system with a partially masked model number that is probably an RTX 4090, and then followed up with some images of the cooler assembly. Lots of fins in that stack there, I must say, and uh, wow, that's, that's a lot of heat pipes too. And then there was this card from Galax that videocards.com posted renders of on Friday. A GPU that's apparently from their SG or Serious Gaming lineup, so no jokes or any silliness please. We'll leave the implied ridiculousness to the protrusive fourth fan on this card, which stands out conspicuously from the backplate as if to say, SLI is dead. Which reminds me, I don't think that I see any NVLink SLI fingers on any of these leaked RTX 4090s, so perhaps we should should also say RIP to the RIP GN RIP J series if even a simple two-way setup isn't a thing anymore. Or maybe they figured out how to do SLI via the PCIe Gen 5 bus. Who knows? Anyway, apart from the four fan setup, this card has a single 12VH power connector, no model name as of yet, and a box with a rough approximation of what a PC gamer looks like, according to Galax. What would be weird is if I showed any leaked images of an EVGA RTX 4090 GPU, because those will not be coming to market. The news broke Friday with videos by Gamers Nexus and Jay's Two Cents that EVGA, one of Nvidia's biggest add-in board partners, will be terminating its relationship with Nvidia and will not be selling any RTX 40 series GPUs. This came as a shock to many who have seen EVGA as a staple provider of Nvidia cards for well over a decade. The company was founded in April 1999, in fact, 
but about 80% of their business by volume in recent years has been NVIDIA graphics cards. And this isn't some rumor either. Steve and Jay both sat down with EVGA CEO Andrew Hahn in recent weeks, and he made it clear that they are completely stopping the production of NVIDIA-based graphics cards, and they do not intend to restart in another generation or two down the line either. EVGA will remain in business as they do sell other products like power supplies and motherboards, and they plan to continue to support customer warranties for existing GPUs, which they've set aside inventory for. Their supply of new 30 series GPUs will likely run out before the end of the year, and apart from layoffs in Taiwan that have already happened, they do not plan to fire anyone. Staff might be reassigned, and some might just continue to get paid for the foreseeable future, which was a nice decision for CEO Andrew to make. There are no immediate plans to sell the company, they're not expanding to new product categories, and at least for now, they're not partnering up with AMD's Radeon team or Intel's Arc squad, but that hasn't been completely ruled out either. And if you do spot an EVGA 40 series GPU image or leak online, that's because they did get as far as creating some engineering samples before development for this generation was halted. NVIDIA's top executive staff was notified of this move all the way back in April, and the key reason was that NVIDIA was just a pain in the ass to work with, according to EVGA. I'm paraphrasing there. And also, CEO Andrew wanted to spend more time with his family rather than dealing with all the behind-the-scenes drama in the GPU industry. It's a messy breakup to be sure, but as for me, I'm hoping EVGA will move beyond GeForce quickly and hook up with Team Red or Team Blue on the rebound. Those 40 series GPUs though, the ones that EVGA won't be selling, are looking almost dangerously performance heavy though, with additional leaks from Twitter leaker copite 7 kimi claiming that the full-size Lovelace chip could have more than 75 billion transistors, a big step up from the 3090 Ti which had a paltry 28.3 billion, or the piddly little Navi 21 chip on the Radeon RX 6950 XT, which has 26.8 billion. Rumored 3D Mark Time Spy Extreme results indicate about double the performance from the 4090 versus the 3090, so that's impressive. Although there's already cynical expectations that Nvidia will be pretending that we're still in the height of the GPU shortage era by attaching a $2,000 plus MSRP. So it is perhaps good news that we could see lesser cards launch this year too again, if rumors are to be believed, with two variants of the RTX 4080 on tap, one with 16 gigabytes of GDDR6X VRAM and one with 12 gigabytes. The 12 gig version was maybe going to be a 4070 Ti before, but calling it a 4080 will probably allow them to sell it for more money, even though it has a narrower memory bus, more than 20% fewer CUDA cores, and a board power of only 285 watts. Let's switch to some good news though. GPU mining is dead, or so it would seem effectively for now, thanks to the Ethereum merge that actually finally happened early in the morning on September 15th, which could reduce global power usage by as much as 0.2%, according to some estimates, which is nothing to sneeze at. Less power used, a new day for PC gamers who don't have to compete with prices inflated by crypto speculation, and Ethereum is still there and functional for people who want to buy and sell it. So who is sneezing, I guess? Well, that would be crypto miners who are invested in GPU mining farms who apparently just really don't want to sell off their GPUs. Look, they say, we're still consuming shit tons of power. We just moved our Terra hashes over to other coins like ETH Classic. Ha ha. Gotcha, PC gamers and people who don't want ridiculous amounts of electricity wasted. But even crypto enthusiasts who aren't complete f***ing morons know that it's not just about hash rates, it's about adjusted difficulty rates and ultimately profitability. So here is what happened to the hash rate on ETH Classic this week. And guess what? Here's what happened to the profitability. And why is that? Well, it's because any legitimate cryptocurrency will increase in difficulty when there's an influx of mining power. Even cryptos that are supposed to be the saviors of GPU mining, such as Ravencoin, have seen a similar dip in profitability. See all these negatives over here in the profit column? That's, that's not a good thing if you're a GPU miner. As pointed out by Ben Gagnon, CMO at BitFarms, it took less than 24 hours post-merge for profitability to turn negative on the remaining well-known GPU mineable coins. Or maybe, you know, just not worth it, unless 
two cents a day for your Raven coin mining sounds appealing to you. You can pretty much see the peak point here on Thursday or Friday after so many miners switched to ETH Classic when they realized it wasn't worth the effort and then started to shut those mining rigs back down. And so, as pointed out by the glorious PC Master Racers on Reddit, it begins. The GPU sell-off, or so we hope, to flood the market with bargains and make it really hard for the new generation of GPUs to prove they're worth whatever Nvidia and AMD want to charge for them. A quick glance at sold auctions on eBay and I'm cautiously optimistic. These are just sold RTX 3080s and while some are still stupidly priced, I am seeing quite a few sell for around 500 bucks or less. And that's not a bad start. And now we move on to tech briefs, purely out of necessity today as I am quite literally running out of time to get this video made. The Radeon RX 7000 series of GPUs is still on the calendar for this year, but apart from a very brief tease during their event at the beginning of this month, AMD hasn't revealed much, but Igor of Igor's Lab came through with an info drop on Thursday using another of his hand-drawn board layouts in an attempt to share some info that he's privy to about the card without fueling the sensationalist leakers out there who feed on leaks and rumors for their own nefarious clickbait videos. Damn them all to hell. So here we have a close to reference board design for the new Radeon RX 7900 XT, showing the seven chiplet based GPU at the center with one graphics compute die or GCD and six multi-cache dies or CCDs, a memory layout that could support up to a 24 gigabyte GDDR6 configuration and three eight pin PCI Express graphics power connectors for up to 450 watts of juice available, although Igor says actual TBP should be far below that. It's possible final designs could use the 12VH power connector as many of the RTX 4090s appear to be going with, but hopefully we'll find out more directly from AMD soon. Intel doesn't appear to be killing off their ARC discrete graphics team anytime soon, but they are killing off some old friends you might remember, Pentium and Celeron, Intel sub brands that used to represent the height of CPU prowess or the ideal mix of performance and efficiency, depending on whether or not you write copy for Intel's marketing team, deprecated and reassigned over the years, particularly after the core series of CPUs debuted, Pentiums and Celerons still held a place on the Intel lineup in the mobile space and for lower power CPUs, but now they'll be replaced by a more up-to-date brand name that they probably spent a bunch of time and money focus grouping and mulling over with outside consultants. The new Intel processors will be called Intel processors. I can't believe Intel pays people to make decisions like this. Speaking of things I can't believe, Amazon's Alexa personal assistant service will soon be replying to questions that you ask it with ads. I'm kidding, I totally believe this and in fact, I expected it. It's an old ploy, offer people something free or free-ish but helpful, build an ecosystem around it so they rely on it on a daily basis, and then start to infuse ads and other annoyances so you can profit while your customers debate how long they'll put up with that BS in exchange for the convenience of voice recognized commands. My guess would be not long, but I never signed up for Alexa in the first place. Hey Google, tell Alexa to eat a barrel of dicks. Speaking of, that, I guess, I was wondering what you all thought about the upcoming AM5 launch when it comes to prices. I mentioned some steep X670 motherboard prices last week, and while DDR5 has come down in price, it's still pretty expensive versus DDR4. Perhaps the answer will be B650 and B650E, the lesser AM5 chipsets that should still allow for fun stuff like overclocking and some PCIe Gen 5 support, depending on the model of motherboard, and we now have a date for B652, or most likely an announcement date for a follow-up launch, and that announcement will be October 4th, when AMD has a live stream showcase planned to further elucidate us on the details of B650 and B650e. So if you'd rather not drop 400 bucks plus on the motherboard for your $300 Ryzen 7600X, maybe there will be some sweet spot B650 boards that provide you with all you need for well below $200 we can hope. And I can hope that you enjoyed today's video. So there you have it guys, tech news for the week. And if you liked it, click that like button or leave me a comment down below. While you're down there, all the articles I talked about today are linked in the description if you're interested. And you can check out my store at paulshardware.net for high quality merchandise, t-shirts, hoodies, beer sets, and more, including my new 8-bit designs like this one. They're so pretty, so shiny. Subscribing to my channel is always a good call too. Thanks again everyone for watching and we'll see you next week.